It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Walk it in the building. Jo, 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 jo. How are you doing? I'm here to make you jealous. Yes, tell us. Uh, what happened? Hey, on Sunday, Obiadu no. sent me food. Ooh. Oh. Found a jam <laughs> with own soup. I don't need any of the soup. Fish, shrimps. Are you oh. for real? <laughs> I ate wow. it at midnight. Wow. So I told her that because I'm fat now, she's the cause. Yeah. <laughs> and I ate it in the morning again with rice. Oh. I, in fact. <laughs> you should not just talk to us again. Uh, wow. so I just let me don't make my husband is enjoying you. <laughs> <laughs> she's cooking something, something. <laughs> <laughs> just to us again. Well, I ate myself so at you. We ate and ate and ate. It's special treatment. Uh -uh. Ah, that's mm. nice. I said I want to just make you people jealous. <laughs> we are jealous you indeed. You just do your day. <laughs> How are you doing, Nima? I'm fine. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I need my sleep order arranged again. I've been awake since two. I've not been able to sleep. Um, ah, okay, I'm grateful to God, to friends, Mrs. Pokwola, the families of Pokwola, they're my clients, and they sent him a birthday gift. Um, Igo also sent him a birthday gift. Thank you to all of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hi, Dean, Mariam. I'm fine, thank you. See, I need to juice you people about this series on Netflix, The Smart Money Woman. Have you seen it? Yeah. So I've read the books. I've read the book, too. Yes, so I it's just, out on Netflix. I give every, every young person around me. The she book. has read the book. Oh. I have another young person that I give the book. So they're passing the book yes. around because young people need to read that kind of book. Yeah. Well, everybody so a and anybody, it's just like, it's a financial literacy um, book. But it's you made your kids such watch a it. Way, yeah, it's written in such a way that it's, it's enjoyable. Still, and so it. she's moved it into a TV series and it was so enjoyable. My children watched it. They were so impacted by it. I did a short video of them talking. Yeah, I saw Like, it. there's a part where the, uh, a couple had a joint account and the husband wiped the wife of, the, of her money. Mm. My son that hardly expresses himself was like, don't ever have a joint account with anybody. Mm -hmm. My daughter told me, like, never have a joint account with your husband. I'm like, okay, we're getting this um, financial literacy in quickly. So, yeah. Interesting. Uh, so I was going to give a, a shout out to my cousin, a young cousin, Koinsola Irobugbu. She just graduated School of Medicine mm. from the University of Lagos. Congrats. Congratulations, darling. God bless. I saw her yesterday and I forgot because That's of all good. that was happening around me. I didn't remember to give her a hug. So when I said, should I go home? And I called her mom and said, wait, did she not graduate from? I just saw your DP. Congratulations, darling. God bless you. And I pray that God will direct your steps and give you Amen. more blessings. Amen. And today is also Senator Olure Mutinbu's birthday. Happy birthday to her. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy returns to her. Okay, anything else happening? And... Yeah, we had a fantastic concert at the Shrine. On oh, yes. yes. Governor Sawulu was there yes. and I, I oh. uh, Many of them were there. Many, yeah. All the commissioners were there. Tourism, ah. uh, information. The Minister of Finance gone was there. I didn't get really? to meet her, though, but she was there. She left, <laughs> she left after her speech mm. and her girls came back. Her aides came back yeah. and said, oh, they, they couldn't stay away. They had to come back and enjoy the show. <laughs> and so these two glad. young girls, they were so cute. Yeah. I, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad for the recognition that Shrine is Get. getting yes. and continually gets. And I think mm. that it, 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 it is a global platform. It's not yes. a local platform yes. anymore. And I think yes. the fact that the governor, with the French president, quite a number of notable have people become, begin to identify more with this president. I think it's something mm. to have a national pride. Yeah. Yes, I got yeah. to meet him, you know, I, I, hey, I said, let right me take you about collaboration. It's okay. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Give me appointments, quick, quick. I'm I'm going going to to you right hey, I'm I'm <laughs> So but, but the point I was trying to make is that hard work pays. Mm. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, it might not happen overnight. Yes. It might take years, but be consistent with it. And when the time comes, God will bring kings people all over to come and support that thing. But because you've been consistent, Waiki, from the beginning, you didn't, you didn't, let, you didn't let go. In the, there are times where it was tough, you need the it was right hard, way. you're doing the right way, you didn't, take, you didn't, you didn't cut corners, mm -hmm. cut corners. Mm -hmm. you didn't take any short cuts. You were consistent with it, and now God is really bringing it. So I'm so happy for you, I'm just, proud of you. I'm just grateful, I'm, yeah. I'm very grateful, you know. Okay. Um, it's where we wanted to try to be, maybe even bigger and okay. better, but it's at least it's, it's moving forward. It's, yeah. There's That's progress. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. We'll start with the nation. 
VAT Rao, FG directs remittance by firms to FIRS. Buhari to push global COVID-19 vaccine equity at the United Nations General Assembly. Um, power shift splits north and southern groups. Government not interested in naming terror sponsors. Lasso VC, I will prioritize workers' students' welfare. 1,182 cholera cases in 13 states within a week. Resident doctors reject court's return to work order. Major headline. Who Major headline. So following <coughs> the, the uh, lamentations of businesses yesterday that they are confused as to who they will pay the VAT to. And the VAT is due in August. So the, the Attorney General and Minister for Justice was saying that that's not an issue because they have a court ruling from the appeal yeah. court to stay um, um, status to maintain status quo, and that means that they should return to what it was before the entire court action started. So it means that they should pay to the FIRS, which is the uh, FIRS, which is the recognized collection of the VATs. Okay. But the LCCI and some other business are insisting that they, they need clarity for certain states on this. Yeah, makes sense. Yes, so in, <clears throat> so well, we remember we took um, the story last week where the UAE had put about six Nigerians on their terrorist, mm -hmm. um, terror list for supporting, financially supporting terrorism. And um, the special advisor to the president, Mr. Femi Adishino, was asked if the president was going to comment on it and say anything about it. And he says, well, for them, the government is not interested in naming <clears throat> and shaming anybody. What they're interested in is bringing these people to book to face justice. And that um, um, you see, and he says, you see that the UAE has given some names and the Attorney General has responded to the matter saying that in due course, all these people will have their day in court. Rest assured, these people will be dragged before justice and justice will have its way. Um, that's good that they should have justice, but if the names have been put out like this. I still mm -hmm. think that it's important that the presidency says something Understanding about it. Understanding the gravity. And exactly. They should, they should mm -hmm. say something. We'll see. The country without um, consequence. As many of you know, the general theme for the um, United Nations is uh, building some resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19 and rebuilding sustainability in response to needs of the planet. So part of what they're going to do, our president is planning to do, is to join the other world leaders to push for equity in the distribution of vaccines across the globe. According to him, it says that um, they're going to contribute to global discussions on climate change, peace and security at the meetings, and they're very, very um, prepared to discuss at the assembly how um, there can be equity also in, the, in, in um, the push for global vaccine. So I think that's important for us at this time because it's one thing to say you can get vaccinated, and that thing to say there's no vaccine available. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. though many countries have surplus. And we, those of us in other countries, need mm. uh, vaccines. It, so. it, it, because it's confusing, because I know we don't have enough vaccines here. And a lot of, um, a couple of states have said it's important to do vaccination. Yes. You can't go to My work. Nature. But there are not enough vaccines. So how do you, you know, mm -hmm. so they really need to push yes. for okay. those who want to take the vaccine. Yeah. Oh, well, let's move on to the punch. A power gridlock persists. Lagos blames NPA. And man laments losses. Picture here of our president being briefed as he prepares for his Friday speech. Herders with guns risk 21 year imprisonment as Songo Lu signs bill. Father arrested for impregnating 19 year old daughter suspect blames devil. Presidential panel sells seven story FRCN Lagos building for 100 million naira. It will still be divided if it zones presidency to the north, says Okorocha. After four year remand, Lagos pastor accomplice rearranged for beheading boy. It's compulsory for Nigeria's businesses to accept E Naira, says CBN. Southern Middle Belt Alliance tackles NEF over voters' claim 2023 presidency. Okay. The father so, who was pregnant. arrested, he had his she had left the mother had left the father some years ago and took her with him. Always and he story. requested for her to come back two years ago and then in June he started to rape her and sleep with her and Child. told her he would kill her if she told anybody. But she now got pregnant. And then she just said, I don't, I don't care if he kills me. She now went to the police to report wow. that, look, he's been raping me and now I'm pregnant. And um, of course, guess what he said? We don't need to guess. The devil. Yeah, the of devil. course. Yes. The, the poor devil is the one that the devil out again. You know, this is always the same story. Mm. Either that the, both parents divorced 
daughter stays with father, and this happens. Mm. That was yeah. always that story. Mm -hmm. Nobody took the FRSC mm. story. I, I took the major headline. Million. Got the major headline. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the special advisor to the governor of Lagos State on transportation and head of traffic management and enforcement compliance team, Tony Fa Yinka, is blaming the MPA for the um, the traffic on a Papa Oshodi Expressway, saying that their job as um, Lagos State is to ensure traffic management and that they are not the ones in charge of ticketing or uh, you know, selling tickets or issuing the tickets. And that the problem is when they get to a papa, somebody then gives an order to shut the gates of the Tinkan port and you have trucks. He has only two options, either to start a one-lane traffic or turn the trucks back to their garage before he starts to manage traffic again. So uh, the MPA must work with them every time for tr smooth uh, runnings of the port areas. But yeah. um, we have M uh, MA and as Manufacturers Association of Nigeria and other businesses complaining that these activities make them lose so much. You have goods that are, you know, while in traffic trying to get to the port to be exported, de de deteriorating and totally some decongest over there, uh, 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 decompose, sorry, and so much ways that they have, um, uh, so they suffer due to this. I think the issue of a papa is not today. Is the issue of Nigeria. Is the same. Look, mm. we are all selfish. You are inside traffic. You know that if you, everybody stays on one lane, we will all go mm -hmm. eventually. No, you will come and block the road. Block yeah. the road, so everybody is now stuck the there. The people for selling hours. the tickets, the people giving them, you know, cutting corners, starts a business also. Mm -hmm. So the person who has waited everybody. for weeks gets to the port eventually. You now shut the gate. The person who has thought, okay, whatever I do, I won't pay. I will just maintain. This mm. traffic can be there for three weeks, yeah. some mm. months, yeah. and they get to the gate. Somebody we have to move on to other stories. Okay, let me quickly take this CBN. Um, CBN. So um, CBN is looking to launch the e-money for first of October, and he's saying that this e-money is in equal, it has equal value to your naira. You're meant to use it for all transactions. It is legal tender. Um, the CBN director of payment system management, Mr. Musa Jimo, says um, during an interview at a TV station. And, you know, he was asked that, uh, what about the technological challenges that we tend to have okay. in Nigeria? How would that affect us? He says, no, that would not be a problem. So, e-money is I here mean, to stay. I mean, what is yeah. e-money? Ah, because like, I saw the headline and I was like, hey, which one is e-money again? No, I was waiting for e to, to hear whether e it will add value to the Naira. E-money is like the crypto that came in and, you know, we talked that about it and the CBM banned it. And then now, so here they are now. Okay. <laughs> Sliding our, into the business themselves. In fact, <laughs> our governor has um, signed into law and has barred headers in possession of firearms who to face 21 years imprisonment really? in Lagos State. According to the, to the law, <clears throat> it provides that all impounded cattle must be reported to the courts, while a person who sells or transfers any leased land to a cattle herder can also be liable on conviction to five years imprisonment um, anybody finds the possession of arms. So, <clears throat> so it's part of the anti-open grazing bill that mm -hmm. has been signed to law, and, um, and we're seeing that it's taking effect immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I can, can I just ask, please, where do the cows have chance to graze in Lagos? There are some places where they... I told, you, I, told you, I told you yesterday, not in Bagada, I still saw at least five cows, cows. together. They were just roaming the road. In fact, somebody, mm -hmm. somebody in my cows, they ah. Samuelu, come and see your, okay, it was the Uber that I was saying. Like, yeah, Samuelu's cows, Samuelu's cows. I know I just worry cows, it's not Samuelu's cows. <laughs> Samuelu doesn't have cows, he's worried that cows. Those cows could have but, left ahead or so, something. So like that market, that market on the express Kara route. market. Yeah, is, is that one band or No, no, they, so that, they, they, they've given them that, sec, that secluded to place. Sell. That's their area to sell. But they can't just walk out and the, be grazing. The idea is they don't, they, they, they don't want grim grazing on public and open places. Kara is That's not really even one. Lagos. Because in, 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 the, in the middle of the night, they walk to... Kill them at the uh, about one. I'm wondering, does that? They have to uh, transport them now in trucks. You okay. know, there was one that we saw strolling on Terminal Bridge. Yes, you don't have that one too. It can be liable. So yes. that, that was saying, if they find you with arms, 21 years. Mm. If you give your land to somebody to to just be having cattle all around the place, use five years. So all of you somehow you have. So to that means they must now register. During COVID, my partner's estates in Agungi, there were cows all over the place. I'm like. Ah, how from where? <laughs> okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
thanks for staying with us. So moving on to Daily Trust. How Boko Haram crisis killed 300,000 children in Northeast, according to the UNICEF. Hmm. Reps demand reports of asset seized from ex-leaders. And then PC earns 366 billion naira from crude oil product sales in May. Oshimbajo most qualified to succeed Buhari in 2023, says Nasara governor. Okay, I have the major headlines. So according to UNICEF reports, uh, more than 300,000 children have lost their lives in the last 12 years because of insurgency ravaging the Northeast. Furthermore, they're saying that the ISWAP, which is the Islamic State of West African province, are recruiting massively across that region. So they say that they started this massive recruitment of jobless youths to join their fold. Another report says that um, um, no fewer than 5,129 out-of-school children were currently battling with mental health of course, in the of course. north. And they're saying that these 300,000 children, over, like over a million persons, have also been displaced across the region. And these 300,000 children they're talking about died as a combination of children killed from crossfires, improvised explosive de devices as the IEDs, children used as suicide bombers, and children killed by malnutrition. So that, that, that sums up the 12-year um, Boko Haram um, insurgency for, for this children. And it's, it's quite a sad, startling number. And um, it's unfortunate that we always focus more on the fact that, oh, Boko Haram has bombed here, but they're forgetting that the people they are bombing, they're children, women and children in these numbers. Mm. Human oh, beings. Human beings yeah. in these numbers. You know, sometimes really, really we count sad. the dead. Oh, many people die. That's true. But also the ones that have been left behind are traumatized and exactly. traumatized forever. Exactly. Really sad. Yeah. You don't remember that lady, uh, Joy, Joy Musa? Yes. That we went to? Yes, yes, that's, that's, yes. I remember her very, very well. She was mm. shot right on her leg. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. I remember. She still has, she can still can walk. Mm. Okay, I have another story. Another story. So the House of Reps yesterday ordered the Presidential Implementation Committee on Landed Properties to produce reports on all assets seized from former Nigerian leaders. So the members of, of the House were saying, you know, they get some names of uh, properties which they expect to see. So they'll give them a report and then there are some of the properties they do not see on that list. And for the ones that they said they have sold, they would like to know what happened to the proceeds of the sale. Where did it go to? How, you know, where did it end up? And um, they also said that there are so many of the... That now, um, the PIC is, was responding and saying that there's some properties that are being occupied by people that are supposed to leave those properties, but they are refusing to. And then when PIC approaches them, they take them to court. And that the federal government has said that they should just give them time. But this is how they raise revenue for the government. And if these people do not leave those properties, they are unable to raise mm. revenue. So we are in a, they are in a quiet <laughs> Okay, there was this vaccination story I forgot to take. Did you take that, Nima? No. They took Cross River Reject Compost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. so the, yeah uh, the Cross Rivers and Plateau have said that they're not going to impose the vaccine on their citizens. Uh, you will only take the vaccines if you are... Um, if you want to mm. take it. That, though they know that the vaccines will protect lives, but it's their fundamental human rights to refuse. Okay. Meanwhile, Edo State have said, you know, yeah. their yeah. own ministry workers, if you don't take it, no work. So they've, in a, a whole weekend, 7,000 people have Imagine been vaccinated. That. And they said, you see, this is... That's Nigeria for you. <laughs> yeah, and then the governor of Lagos State at your event was also mm -hmm. saying that in Lagos State, the residents, just 1.2% that have been vaccinated so far. Mm -hmm. And that, yes, they are thinking about the mandatory thing, but right now, um, that's way, way below 60% given by World Health Organization for every city to have been vaccinated. So mm -hmm. The Lagos story too is really poor. Maybe then we should go the harsher way then. Mandating mm. people so to mm. get their vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, at at that event, because it was a global Let's event, move on. they were um, everybody had to do COVID tests before you enter shrine. Mm. That's it. Okay, Vanguard. About some just federal government accumulating debt for incoming government is criminal. Strike destabilizes our system, disrupts healthcare services, says Luth MD. Khan urges FG Ikaduna to immortalize my life here. Sit at home, business, own, business owners lament lack of security. Sawulu signs anti-open grazing bill into law. Nigerians spend 2.2 trillion on petrol in 12 months. 
COVID-19 misconceptions, conspiracy theories, stall vaccination progress in Nigeria. Insights on VAT collection and distribution in Nigeria, says Ayo Teriba. Okay, which story are we taking? Take okay, the chief medical director of um, the Lagos University Teaching Hospital um, received um, members of the House of Rep Committee on Health. And they were going around and he was just telling them what the state of affairs is concerning the health sector and youth, given all that has been happening in our country. So he says, first of all, because of the ongoing strike, it has really affect and, affected and disrupted um, the services in the hospital. First of all, um, many people don't come to the hospitals anymore. And this is how they generate revenue. And because of that, you know, they're unable to put money towards facilities. Because of the um, ongoing strike, trainings and research has also stopped. Then they said that um, doctors' immigration is on the rise. Of course, they said they have so many doctors that have left um, Nigeria for other countries. And then the value of Naira, the continued depreciation of the value of our Naira is affecting contracts that are being awarded. And so they have to review and review. So there are just so many things. Luther that um, has no yeah. bed is complaining that it's because... No, no, no. He's talking generally. Those are the things that mm -hmm. they are going through, mm -hmm. generally in health sector. These are the things that are affecting mm -hmm. us. But the um, committee, uh, the House of Rep Committee on Health, were also impressed by the, um, what they have seen so far. They said there's a lot of improvement since the last time we visited Luth. So. I wanted so to take the, um, um, over the east, southeast story. A lot of businesses have remained closed. They are obeying the sit-at-home order by IPOB, even though IPOB has said no. But they say um, there's nobody to protect them. They, the they can open their businesses and um, they will be attacked. No police on the road, no soldiers on the road. And they're blaming the governors. Uh, why are the gov governors not protecting exactly. the citizens? Because I even though I IPOB has said we're not, but there are some hoodlums that still come in take and attack, yeah, take advantage of the situation and attack them. So um, they are even saying that the, maybe the governors are even... Or pass and pass through <laughs> of wow. their complicity. Oh, so I want to take the major, major headline, headline please. The former president, Oba Sonjo, was um, somewhere in South Africa and he was interviewed on this hour, constant borrowing and the president's new application to the House of National Assembly to, 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 for another ex, um, loan. And he, he said it's okay to borrow. It's not like it's bad to borrow when you have it, but you must have a plan to pay back. But to borrow, and you know, with a, a plan to leave the debt and the burden of it for next generation and generation to come, is outright uh, wrong. And he he mentioned, you know, that by the time he took office in 1999, we had a debt servicing debt servicing cost of 3.5 million dollars, billion dollars, sorry, and that that was worrisome because the monies were accumulated. So if you have a borrowing for a recurrent expenditure, you are totally wrong. And it should be stopped. And he called it a word that I don't want to go far using. But if you're borrowing and the, the uh, infrastructure you're planning to use the money for can pay itself, mm. then it makes sense, which is what everybody has been asking this they government. That, you know, you keep saying we have the GDP to borrow, but you're saying that what we need to work on is our revenue generation, which means we don't have the means to pay. And the infrastructure that you're borrowing this money to work on or whatever you think you're using them for cannot pay by itself. So you're, you're planning to... To, to indebt the generations that are coming. It's something that the National mm. Assembly should be serious. And then and they, they also said on. that only last week, the debt management office put the nation's total debt stock at 35.5 trillion naira and 21 trillion of which is domestic debt. Mm. There's an article here that I thought was interesting by Chema Obina. She was talking about the infodemic which is a major issue we're having concerning COVID-19. According to this article, uh, overabundance of information, accurate or not, that's, so, that spreads that spread a, 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 along the disease outbreak is what is causing more deaths at this time. According to her, there was a data she, she quoted saying about the first quarter of 2020, 6,000 people were hospitalized and 800 died just by misinformation of COVID-19. Hmm. Um, so, and I say that the issues of wrong information, the politicization, to the conspiracy theories that vaccines would alter human DNA, all sorts of false information out there. And this infodemic is what can be going to um, stop and prevent people from getting vaccinated and understanding the importance of protecting themselves and their families and loved ones.
Moving on now to the Nigerian Tribune, clock to Buhari, naval base useless in Kano Desert. Nigeria needs 300 additional hospitals, 8,000 doctors to provide standard health care, says report. As Buhari attends ONGA, that's the United Nations General Assembly, two Nigerian groups clash in New York over state of nation. Southern Middlebelt Alliance slams Northern Elders Forum on North's plots to retain power. CBN says attacks on Emifile based on new forex policy. Not huge population claims spurious, says Adebanjo. Uh, APC battles crisis in 23 states, and Oyo PDP kicks as faction passes vote of no confidence in Makinde. Which story? Major headline? So major headline um, by Edwin, um, Edwin Clark has um, questioned the situation of the naval base in Kano, saying that, you know, coastal states, in, in his words, let me quote him quickly, he says, it should be economic viability that should inform this decision and the practicability of the naval base. We know a naval base works on coastal lines. And now all the coastal states that make, that make up the Niger Delta are porous presently. They don't have naval bases that are active. But you are going to locate a naval base on an 100-hectare land provided by the governor in the middle of the desert. It has to be practical or not. And I think this is not an issue of Edwin Clark against Buhari. This is an issue of a failing national assembly. Because, according to him, the only uh, naval institute, uh, naval base was in Sapele, and it's been left to deteriorate. So we're saying, if, they, if it was in Sapele in a coastal area, and they abandoned it to deteriorate, why do you think one on the, in the middle of Kanu will be left to work? You need to put, see the, uh, the, the issues he mentioned, security, economic viability, coastal areas. This is what should inform what a naval base would do. Where would they get the, the level the of um, uh, uh, ocean needed or level of water needed for training? Um, and you have to then transport them. You can have other security agencies that are land uh, um, needed to, they need land to work like the Nigerian Army or something located in that place, not a naval base. I was listening, to the, radio, I was listening to the radio this morning and one of the hosts on the radio show was saying uh, that America has um, Naval bases on, um, on in land areas. Yes. But Edwin Clark, in his own article, says, don't compare yourself to America. Do you know how many he Naval responded. bases? He said the Mississippi that you're making uh, you're talking, is surrounded by water. That state that you're saying the Naval base is in the middle of a state is surrounded by water. So they have something to work with. I cannot imagine no, okay. what informed the It's think, not our hot topic today. Uh, no, it's not, just no, we just need, we need the president to respond, respond on practical reasons why you know. This is not about ethnicity. I hate to argue. Because ethnicity. they were saying uh, there are rivers in, in Kano. We have to run. Okay. Okay. Not fish, I mean, it's not that kind of river we are talking about. I know. That's all we can I know. take on front page review. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, we would have preferred not to talk about Femi Fanikaudi today. But the truth is, we saw a video when Nigerians were singing a song that Nigerians usually sing in church. My helper, oh, my helper, my helper, oh. And then we saw him coming down from the car, greeting them, appreciating their cheers. And we thought about it and said, listen, sometimes we have to tell each other the truth on how we relate with our leaders or people we admire or we... Um, that man is too good a word. I'm telling people that mm. we're supposed to... Yeah, we celebrate. That we celebrate. So the conversation is, many people saw that and found it distasteful. However, we all do it somehow in different ways. When we see political leaders, we see rich people, we see people that we feel that we need them for something or we are seeking favors from them. And... We celebrate them, even if, if the truth is that we don't like what they do, we don't like what they stand mm. for. We don't have the confidence to say to their face, but because of what we need, we are psycho fans around them. So the conversation is, how do we begin to talk to each other as citizens on knowing how to preserve your dignity as a person? Especially because at times like this,
you need real leaders. You need to celebrate um, um, integrity, celebrate people who are doing the right thing. So that's the conversation. You, we saw that video, and we're probably going to play it at some point so that people can see it. But it's not just about them. It's about all, all of us, Nigerians, in different ways, shapes, or fashion. We all do it. I don't want to use the word that comes to mind on television. It's not the appropriate word. But it's something X, Y, Z leaking. And these <laughs> leaders. It's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's what we do somehow. So how can we begin to take them for who they are, which are servant leaders? They are supposed to serve us. So those people shouldn't be there singing those kind of praises. They should be there to ask questions. So what are your thoughts on this? Let me start with Nima. So what those women did for me is the least of the psychophancy. Those are women supporters probably for the day's earning of maybe in the highest 10,000 naira per person. So they are, you know, being videoed, praising him. Usually they'll go there. The late Saraki used to have women trek for hours in Kwara State to get every Friday to get what he called his sadaka from those women. And they called them and, went, you know, and we saw when the drama happened in Kwara, some of those women would rather die than have that. Remember, they're the sacrifice. They're the ones that will vote, uh -huh. remember? But no, they were, they, those ones, were, they, you can't even compare that late Saraki to uh, Fanny Kayo. They, no, 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 they can't be compared because he, he did it consistently till death for those women. But for me, the issue is the relationship between Mr. President and Fanny Kayodi. Is either that 100% truth, or 100, in every 100% false, there's 1% truth, is the situation, or something is wrong. Like YK said, I would not, if it was me, be associated with him. For the level and looseness of tongue, someone who is careless with what he says part time, cannot be trusted with what he says, comes out and defames me. Not even an apology publicly to me. Which would bring me to a point where he's defecting and I'm the one receiving him. The party can receive him. The truth is, in one of the videos that I shared on my Instagram page, I listened to that video over and over again. And how he was talking to um, Nandu Kanu then. And assuring him of a division that I could not see in my immediate neighborhood. Telling him that, you know, the North and the Eastern agenda, you know. And after that video, and I saw the picture of the president, I said, it's either what he said about the pre president's agenda being total northern was and selfish was, there's a percent of truth in it. Or the president, something is wrong with him being associated with him again. I will not. Okay, so, well, so I was going to... The president now, in this mm. case now, is also a psychophant in this case. Because someone of his character should not should be vehemently big against... So in fact, yeah. they used to call it in days ostracized. Mm. In Islam, they will say, do not take his witness for anything. Okay, so that so means... he cannot be a witness in a criminal case against anybody, even a civil matter. His word <laughs> cannot be trusted. So, so, okay, I was going to focus on, on the sacrifice the people. Mm -hmm. But now you've taken us to a point where we're not critically analyzing. Let us even understand what, what, at, what, at, what is at play here. Mm -hmm. On the president's side, the people's side, uh. from even the, poli the political party side, uh. and the person, what exactly the people are asking, what is at play? What, exactly. what is happening? Who is aligned with who? To what objective? Because many no, of us are outside the circles. I mean, I try really hard not to get into those circles. I mean, as much as they pull me, I try to stay where I am because this is my lane. So maybe somebody can call us in and explain to us what exactly is happening, this alignment that we're seeing. Mm. And this psycho, over psycho fans that we're seeing, let me come to Maram, your yes. thoughts on, on, the, on the women and yeah. all the celebrations and how we as a people are with our leaders. Yeah, so the danger, we know psycho fancy and politics go hand in hand. I feel that they, they, they feed off each other mm. because you have, to, um, you have to have those praise singers um, sort of, you know, encourage you and give you the confidence that you are liked. And people have turned that psychophancy knowing, they use it knowing that um, this is also another way where they can gain favor from the person that they are trying to push. So that happens. But the truth is, for us Nigerians, for those of us who want better leaders, who want those that represent us, will do that in honesty and, you know, and truthfully. 
we need to realize that when we praise people that are not deserving of praise, it backfires mm -hmm. on us. Mm -hmm. So you may get the 10,000 Naira for the day, mm -hmm. but then your praises has put in someone in office who do, does not deserve to be there and who will calculate every 10 Naira he's giving you mm -hmm. and it takes times 100 of what he has given you. So it's important that we know that this has an effect on us. Be careful who you push out there just because of what you want for today. And that's why when people talk about the votes, we tend to leave it for only when it's election period. But this psychophancy is all year long, through the years, before elections come. You're constantly praising someone. But that is at the local level. We have a new form of psychophancy. The brand, personality, mm. image makers. They know who this person is. They know what he stands for. They understand that he does not really have the qualities or has the credentials. But they know the words and things that they use to make this image. Because at the end of the day, it costs money to do that. And mm. they'll be paid money. Mm. So everybody's mm. in there for the money that they can get for themselves. Right. Right. Yesterday on the show, you were saying something about how do we get people not to um, push things. You were talking about um, our Nigerians in diaspora, mm. where they seem to be doing things only for themselves. Like, they get me, the opportunity. Yes, me, myself, and I. And that is what we're doing to with the cycle fantasy. It's like, I don't care about the Nigerian pro problem. For me and my family, I'm going to use this guy 10, and get some money mm. and mm. keep it aside. So that is what we're doing at different levels. And no one can point to anyone and say, oh, it's those that are not educated. Because the educated ones are doing it in an educated but, way. Yeah. We're all cycle fans. We're all in different ways. So, so the, the real conversation is, how do we begin to help Nigerians to look at this in a different, from a different way? Because I really want us to use FFK's situation. Mm -hmm. It is such a learning curve and a learning opportunity for many Nigerians. So we said it here yesterday that what not to be, who not to be, is, is, is this man right here. But there, I, I, my, my question, my, my next one, and I'm coming to you, YK. Yes, we are all psychophants. We are all in this situation now where we all need something or all the other. But if we desire real leaders, if we desire true leaders, what can we, how can we talk to each other to change our perspective on how we see them? Because I would like to see a leader and greet him in a decent, respectful way and move on. I don't have to loiter around you mm -hmm. to see if something will drop and everything. But that's the mentality. You, people just stick around you just in case something just drops. Why do we always do that? Well, you see, I think... It's our orientation. Because I, I was going to go back to when Babangida was president. And I remember then, um, is that the video? That's the video. <laughs> See, it's showing now. <laughs> See, they all see it. I, think, I wish we could get some audio so that for those who haven't seen it. So that's funny trying to come down. They are there singing, my helper. See that? See me. <laughs> and then he comes down. Banda. <laughs> Oh my God. Look at that. She's, she's worshipping him. Worship. Praise and worship. Obviously. Wait, how, how did we get here? Obviously, it's, it's stage here? managed. Um, for me, that is obviously stage managed. But I was going to go to right, when so. Babangida was president. And I remember everybody was criticizing him June 12, everybody. And a few years went by, and suddenly he came to Lagos for an event. As he walked into that event, everybody, that was there. Uh, they are all part of the people that have abused him. June 12, this, they all stood up and cheered this man on. He came in like a king. And all the people who had criticized, because everybody is looking for their own stomach infrastructure. Until we now, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with meeting a power person. But, I mean, I will not meet someone now and start saying, ah, sir, please, sir, thank you, sir, good morning, sir. No, because we are all human. So when we start to treat everybody like a human being and don't just think, oh, because he's there, what am I going to And if we don't start to teach ourselves now, this trillion, trillion that they said they are borrowing, uh. <laughs> 
Because we will accept it. Mm -hmm. We will accept anything just for now. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that Nigerians, we don't think of future. We only think of now. Yes. We only think, ah, what is my gain right okay. now? Mm -hmm. Not what is my gain in future. Exactly. Which is what we or what about. is the gain of my children in future? No, we don't right. think that What will I me, me, gain? And I. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, I, I was working with somebody, and she was telling me that when they give out contracts to people, they do all the work to get the contract, and then they run away with the money. Mm -hmm. They don't care. So, because I was asking, because I was saying, like, why, why, because, you know, with our outside, when you see Lagos State, you think, ah, Lagos State, we just get contract. Well, but when I started working with the, with the, with God, with the, with the Commission of Education, and I saw the process for somebody to just collect, I go, ah, this process is so difficult. People think that you just come here and just collect money and go. No, it's a very, very stringent process to collect one naira from the government. But after that long process, you now get the money, you don't even do the job. You just run away with it. <laughs> In that is why no people like that we are should be our arrested. Own problems. Yes, we have because, to no, because there are no consequences. Access, yeah. where, where have you heard that they successfully prosecuted and jailed somebody who did that? We have millions who did in the past. There's a particular That's project a right before my nose. Every time I drive there, I cry because I, it has been awarded eight times already. Okay. Mm. Eight times. And commissioned, they will come and commission, they will start the project. Eight times. Eight times, and the mm. communities are supposed to benefit from it. Let, I watch let, it let's go on a break. When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still dissecting Femi Fanika, this, um, with the, he, the Reason reception he got from his praise, praise, singers. praise singers in his house. And um, comparing that to how we Nigerians treat leaders or people who we see are wealthy, how we sing their praises, and if this is sustainable or how we can even begin to retrace our steps to treat them as they should be treated as servant leaders. Let me take Bright. Good morning, Bright. Are you there? Hi, guys. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Uh, let me start by saying that um, I think if everybody has his right to defect or not so. Secondly, I also feel that at somebody like Pani Coyote, for me, it beats my imagination up till now that anybody would take him serious. Because even if he defected to APC, what, what is the blog vote that Pani Coyote will give to anybody who wants to be president? And you know, it's so funny that even the Khan, I remember Khan, say at the point in time that he's the next president of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It is that bad because he has this thing with his mouth, just like one of you said there, that when he started saying this rhetoric, everybody seems to believe him. But you know what? I said to somebody that is not peculiar to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We saw what happened in the, in the U.S. As bad as some people feel Donald Trump is, some people still feel that it's the best thing that has happened to America. Yeah. So for me, I think <laughs> we youth should change the method. Populate APC, populate PDP, and when it comes to the primary, make sure you are a member, a carry member. I'm not talking of social media members. I'm not talking of Facebook members. Go into these two parties, be a delegate, and vote who you think will represent your... your, mm. your, your your interest. And thirdly, is to the fact that, just like everybody, we are, we are all equal. It's only in Nigeria that, look, I work in an organization where the head of the organization asked me to call him by name because he said we are equal. When we travel out of that country, we take the same per diem. We stay in the same hotel. He cannot say because he's my boss. Then he will stay in a certain hotel and then I'll stay in another one until we start addressing this thing to make everybody know that we are equal, whether small or big. Because at the end of the day, when we vote, it's only one that I have that you have. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much, Bright. So Bright has opened the door. I think I'd like to stay on for a minute. Um, so Panika could be in APC for a good reason. Maybe mm -hmm. he has gone there to actually help clean up. Mm -hmm. Or he could have gone there. I mean, let us see the brighter side. So, okay, how useful is a Panika his cantankerous nature can help in maybe scattering everywhere there, or 
being a spokesperson for the party because obviously he's good with words. Yeah. Maybe they desperately need somebody who is speaking for the party. So maybe there's maybe there's a reason, you know. So if we can look at the the, the silver lining here for the usefulness of a Fanny Kayode in APC. And if we can make sense of it, as I said, we are not politicians. We don't know the political cards that is playing. Well, as Nigerian citizens, we're only trying to imagine, you know, why a man like this would be invited or would defect to APC. Okay, so it's about, uh, I can see why a political party, a political party would associate with him, mm. not a person. So the political parties, what they want is they want more votes. They want people to, to be talking about them. They want more support. And somebody like Afani Kayade, who has the gift of the garb, I mean, when he sits down here, you know, we always talk about it, and he speaks, he speaks so well. It's easy for the words to come. And he tends to hold people in, you know, oh, yes. yes, when he mm. speaks. So there's yeah. that. And I can see why a political party will be associated with it. But the question now would be, so what does that party stand for? If the sort of person that they are associated with is described to be a certain type of person who does not, um, you know, who you cannot trust his word, where he says one thing today and he says it with all his might and he even puts his life on the line concerning mm. it and yet he changes his mind the next ah. time. So for that political party, do they realize that this is what they are, um, <laughs> that, 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 that they are um, aligning with? Another thing is maybe the political parties think Nigerians don't care about those values. Mm. So that's, it's coming back to yeah. us. Do you really care yeah. mm. who is representing who, Ew. who is aligning with who? Mm. As long as they can come and talk to you and give you all the sweet words, when they are done, you still be carrying those placards and singing praise mm. and worship song for Fantastic. God towards a human being. So maybe it's really about us. We don't really care. Yeah. What, are our, what are our values? Oh, but God bless what do you want? Thank you. For, let me take Onoa. Come to you, yeah. Nima. Onoa, good morning. Are you there? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Bye. You're live. Go ahead, please. And um, all you ladies, I thank you all. Morning. Uh, Morning. You, you are, your program is a very interesting. Thank you, the sir. Truth that, the truth in Nigeria is that uh, we have blessed with more than enough of sacrifice. We have people all over, from family level to the village level to the club level, everywhere. Sacrifice have built, have built everywhere. And that is why that. Why if Nigerian is complaining that Buhari has already destroyed us? People, governors, senators, even from Fanikayade, after condemning himself that he would rather die than join him, what is the state from there? I, 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 think, I think I align myself with YK when he says the politics of Nigeria is about self-pocket projects. People just struggle to just fill their pocket. We don't have genuine politicians at all. Only God will save this country because everybody, yeah. I, I, I tell you, everybody is a psychopath. For me to yeah. conclude, I tell you from 2015, having Buhari as the president of Nigeria is a huge mistake. And that PC is the ruling party is a huge disappointment. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> is this an indictment on APC also, you think? I mean, because there are other... I don't you know. See, I, I just want us to realize something. You make your money from fraud. You, you, every Nigerian... I won't say everyone, because some of us I have still, value, okay. still have values. But a lot of Nigerians will hail you. They don't care how that money came about. The fact is that you have that money to spend. So you become a papa. Ah, Murado. Ah, Kiniko, Kiniko. So they don't know whether she's. They don't yeah. care. How she made it. They don't make... care. Now, we need. That's why I say, let us re, rejig our brains. Let us start to educate the younger ones coming. Because for some of us, it's a lost cause. Mm. We are there. Our children mm. that are coming up, mm. our children that are going to take over. How are we going to? Because it was, uh, maybe it was on our this thing that we saw uh, some uh, politician take rice to some people in Ghana, but they threw the really? rice back at him. Yes, ah. values. Yeah. What are our values? Mm -hmm. Our core values. Even in Look, this Nigeria. Wait, Nima. Let me, I'm so sorry. I have to pause you again. The Peter's been holding for a while. Peter, are you then? I come to Nima. Peter.
You're live. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mario. Good morning. I hear me. Good morning. Good morning, Mario. Morning. Yes, ma. Yes, I think the issue of uh, psychopathy has been there for a very long time. Even if we go back to our homes, we find out uh, parents are not asking children questions of how they got this or they got that. Then in Nigeria as a whole, I think this is a... If there should be a law against it, because I always find it hard to believe when I hear somebody defects from a party to another party. It shows a, a sense of disloyalty. It, says, it, it shows a sense... You know, you go to foreign countries, you hear somebody in a political party for 20 years, for 30 years. I mean, a sense of loyalty to what he believes. What does he really believe? Does he really love the country? Then you find out people defect from uh, parties in Nigeria just for selfish reasons. Even the president that we have today, how many parties uh, was he before he finally became a president? Those are the things that we're looking at. Uh, what, what is making somebody defect? Is it loyalty? But in this country that we are, we find out that a lot of them move out of selfish interest, not actually because of love. Self Look at those people on the video that you just showed us today. How many of them are really affected by aviation industry mm -hmm. or by a former ministry that the same man poses to be a minister of? How many of them? If I, people just come out because once you have money, you are seen as a god and not actually because of a love for the nation. Thank you so much, Thank Peter. You so much. I have to wrap up, but let me let Nima okay, find out so for the party, for me, this is where the problem is. I think for if the party think is eloquence, empty eloquence is something of value. I wonder, because for some of us, I can't even see content any time he speaks. And for you to say this person has some value that he's bringing, for those governors who packaged him and sold him to the president, who spent time with him, and you say, you know, I was with governor of social state, I was with governor, you know, and the one who, who mistakenly announced his defection much earlier when he was still prizing himself, that some people call it research. This is a man who's not been able to keep family itself together. Which value does that person bring to you? In some countries, this is what you check of a person to be sure that this is a leader who can lead. Someone who can make compromises and make his immediate, his immediate uh, territory work before you talk about a national... Well, he's not even running for an office yet. He's no, not no, yet, no, but he's just he, joining the party. He, can't, he hasn't run for any office in his entire career of in politics. He's an appointee of government. He's lo lo uh, he, he locks around office, uh, the power offices for what he gets. So he's probably waiting, just like the last caller said. This is a person who... I don't know how we prize loyalty. But loyalty goes, it goes to the very core of everything. This is someone who has never mm. stuck to one person. So loyalty is something he lacks. Mm. What exactly is the value that he's now bringing to, yeah. to anybody? Appointment as Minister of Aviation, we, are, we still have issues with aviation. Well, we have and, to wrap and, up and, uh, information. What exactly will he bring? We will continue to monitor the story because I want to know what exactly... What this, as I said, what was what, what's being calculated? Is it for him to become spokesperson of APC? No. Is it because to be minister of Campaign information? Officer. Is it because to be to take Gar Bashir's job? Is it just become to be VP? Let us know what what, what exactly did he become for God? Oh, just a member of the party. Oh, just a member. Just okay. <laughs> so that is in the <laughs> fold. Elder in the southwest representative. Okay, we will continue to monitor him because he's he's um the campaign is still news. I mean, still mind boggling, and Nigerians are still asking lots and lots of questions. He's the epitome of what not to be mm. in life is the epitome. Same. We're yet to see him at Bodilon. And I'll really, I'll, I'll really uh, be surprised to see him I at doubt Bodilon. it. I seriously, I, I'll be shocked if he they comes had to their differences. Now. Because if he comes to Bodilon, I'll be really shocked. I mean, that, that one will shock me. Politics, you, know, you never they know. Say, hey, yeah. they don't have permanent friends, right? No permanent friends. So let us, let, interest, let's, let's just see what happens. Interest, okay. Let's go on a break. When we return, move on to other stories. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Moving on to other topics. So, you know, we've been discussing the Apapa gridlock. So, join us on the show now is the chairman of the United Truckers Forum, Nigeria Association of Road Transport Owners, NARTO, N-A-R-T-O. 
Prince Hassan Adekoya. He'll be discussing the never-ending power, power gridlock and the chaotic situation along that axis, the ripple effect on our economy and other situations. Welcome, welcome, sir. Good morning. Good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, so... I'm sorry, um, Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owner Tax Force Chairman. Tax Force. Yeah, the yeah. United Trucker has no chairman yet. We only have seven-man committee. Oh, thank you for correcting that. Thank you. All right, so um, because we have a Nima who lives in that axis, so should we get a daily update on what's happening? But it's good that we have you here because you are you're part and parcel of the Truckers Association and you can give us a clearer view of why there still isn't some sanity in that region. Give us an idea of what you see as a problem. Thank you. We also grew up there, being a stakeholder, we grew up in the industry. Like I said to my colleagues and to, whole, to all, every Nigerian, that the situation in, in Apapa, it's affecting all Nigerians, not just Apapa, not just Tinkan, not just here in Lagos. It affects all our needs. And um, all of this ball back to us, either we like it or not. The Apapa gridlock, it's, a artificial, it's an artificial thing. And like I repeat every day, we can end it in three days. Mm. Because the policies behind all of this, if those policies are not reviewed, we'll continue to live in it. If those policies are not reviewed, okay. we'll continue to live in it. And um, now we have a TTP app. They are not doing well. If those policies are not reviewed, and we'll end up saying, okay, we want to come up with another team. And coming up with another team, we'll end up having worse. What's okay, so that you understand, I want people mm -hmm. at home to understand you. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the app about? Mm -hmm. How does it work? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And why is it failing? <clears throat> TTP app is a truck transit pack. Um, you now came in ETO app. The ETO will have to go online to do our booking. Here you can easily do your booking. Okay. You can be in Kano, US, anywhere, do your booking once you have the app on your phone. Okay. So you are supposed to be called in when it is your turn. So okay. we are talking about the trucks now? Yes. Okay. The trucks are supposed to be called in. Now, in a situation whereby we have the, the, the promise to take off human interference, mm -hmm. and now we have more, more, more in human interference on the app. Because while me, I am in the park, I'm waiting for my turn to be called in, then some, some men that have gotten their connect within the MPA system, that have to manipulate the TTP, you see they have their, their max booking overnight. Mm -hmm. My trucks are in the park, I'm waiting for me to be called up, then those that has, act that has, has access to the max booking, you now find them on the road in the morning, midnight, anytime. Mm. So that is the manipulations. So somebody's the hacking into the system. So, so what's going on? Somebody is hacking. So you're on the management the okay, mm. of the system. The, the management, management the system. hacking for themselves. Mm. So let's just say, let's put it like this. So we're on a queue, man, no, waiting man. for our turn. But there are some group of people that may have access. Yeah. Uh, with those in management. Oh, oh. So they'll bypass everybody, skip the line, and then they will go ahead, even though you have booked already. That's it. Who are these people? Can we be naming these people and saying, okay, if you cannot name them, where, which office is doing this thing? Can mm -hmm. we say it? Let's so us stop the playing all these hanky -panky. These are the people that, have to go, that will need to go to Donald Trump in the US or go to the Great Britain to get a letter to come over to the system here and say, okay, I want to have my way. And wanting to they're highly connected, yeah, they're wanting to maybe I am in charge here on the road and I've gotten a letter from Donald Trump and I'm like, oh wow, this is from Donald Trump. I'm going to be sending my family over to the US someday. I want a favor from him too, so I need to get it done mm. for him to have access. Mm. So just come on, man, that have just two trucks and has nobody, mm. even in, at the embassy, you find them back. Mm. So we're saying those with the big so it's corruption, yeah. pretty much large yeah. corruption. So yeah. the Okay. Sorry, I, I know you have plenty of questions. No, I just want to, because you are saying change these policies. What exactly are these policies that need changing? I, I think you should just lay yeah. everything out on it. Let us try and solve this problem. All the policies around MPA, those policies have created several issues with it. We, the youth in the industries, and our leader, several will say to them, we cannot trade our future. These things are not right. Let's put things this way. We end up sending us on suspension because... For example, hmm. what, give us one what policy. policy that's... Okay, like now, our leaders will say to them, we don't have to take this. Let's stand on this. Which one? The ETO? The, the ETO, TTP? even before the arrival of the ETO. Okay, which one is that? Before the arrival of hmm. the ETO. Because our, our leaders, they are, most of our leaders are afraid of their bank going from million maybe to zero. 
So you say I don't small, small Mayor, businesses. Okay, you say small businesses and small players in the field are the ones suffering the most from yes. this. Are you people larger in number? Because this is investigatable. I want to see how much of it can be found out by anybody since in government. So if I am a player A is a major player, and but he's supposed to only get a truck in part time. And it is seen on, re on the register or on the records that his trucks go a hundred at a time. That is corruption, certainly, because he can't register a hundred trucks per time. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes, of course. Yeah. So that's, you can be, it can be researched. Mm -hmm. now, and that's before A2. Before A2, we have that. A2, A2 is, A2 is the, the app. The app. No, no, okay. Yes. A2 oh, is the... The TTP, um, the, TTP, the truck transit truck pack, then you have to go and download the app. Oh, the, okay. No, the one Lego state, your um, electronic tr um, truck, um, I've, I've forgotten the um, okay. details okay. for ETO. it, but A2. It's supposed to be, create a pack for them somewhere, give them numbers. They go online, they register their truck, and they are on a call-up system e-call-up system for trucks. So when a truck is called, they move into a papa. They're yeah. supposed to move seamlessly because they've so been Nima, called. it is the dishonesty on the part of the management because yes. you created an app, yet you are not going to buy the app. You're going by connection. Yes. Man who no man. Now, yes. from what he's saying, yes. the truck, your association, the uh, traffic trans task force, uh, you know, the one transport task force created by the Lagos state government. Yes. And the operators of the LPA, all of these three people, yes. know what is happening. The way I studied it before it was launched, because I had an inkling about the app and the, the, in fact, the person who brought it in, was supposed to ease the situation we had there. All the parks created by pre previous administrations in Lagos State were supposed to be used for trucks. So we don't have you guys on the road, on our bridges everywhere. Only when you're called will you use this facility, add it straight to your business, do it and get out. This is supposed to be an easy thing. But if you have people calling, cutting, that con cutting corners and being forced to park on the roads, or the people in MPA locking them because they've not collected their share, something is wrong. Right, okay. So your guys too, you, yeah. and you must be willing to mention names. Yeah, you see, we are supposed to go through park, like you said, there's a satellite park, there's a pregate. But the funniest part of this, the game here, while it was about to kick off, we, we submitted like 27 packs. None of those packs was approved because they know we're going to unveil some things. And they never want that to happen. What do we have now in return? All the holding bay around the Amo Ward offering, they granted them a pregate. They can just pregate to the port. And none of these bonded terminals, none of these uh, holding bay has the capacity to take 20, to pack 20 trucks in them. And that is not supposed to be so. Yes, let me understand yes, pre-gates. So pre-gates, are they like garages where yes. these are, have been licensed garages that they go from there to the port? Yes. Or you already had garages that would have taken the, like... Uh, 500 large, trucks, 1,000 trucks. But they did not approve those. No. What were the reasons given for not approving those um, garages? They just declined them. Okay. Because of their policy. We have... Bonded terminals, oh, sorry, olden bays around the world of it. All of these, old, most of these olden bays were granted a pre gates. We are granted what? A pre gates pack. Yes. Like you can just from approve, you can just approve to the port. Mm. So now this bonded terminal leaves a box on our truck. We have like 20,000 of them. There's no way to park. They hang around Lagos Road. Mm. That policy. So why is NP, so who's supposed to do that approval? That, that, is it NPA or is it the Lagos State Government? It yeah. is the NPA, then they are supposed to, Lagos State Government are supposed to supervise it, but they don't understand the game. Mm. NPA only make all of these trucks available on Lagos Road for the last mile. They just keep fishing on our trucks. Then we have to go to Makoko Market and be pricing and buying our trucks back. Mm. They are just fishing on trucks. They are not aware of all of this. Mm, okay. Lagos State they don't know what is happening. No, no, no. no, no. Well, uh, MPA, MPA, they have a cabal. That is the truth. So this cabal now are the real problems yes. of that Apapa port. So what you're telling us now is that if I go to Apapa now, the trucks are still full on the road. Yes. Because they are not in the terminals or yeah. wherever the parks where they're yeah. supposed to be. So the only thing to, we can do is to demand the resignation of the head of MPA. Yes. And all his... Oh, the new course. acting MD yes. had a meeting with us on the 7th. Mm. And okay. he said to us he wants to partner, he wants to end all of this. Because he's put a question across to him that do you want to end it? And he said yes, he wants to end He wants to partner with us. Every information we have, we need to work with him yeah. so he can end it. And we said to him, okay, we're going to give you a try. We have this, um, there's this TTP account, which MPA mandates us to pay 11,000 naira into an account. 
okay. on Lagos Road, not accessing the port, just mm. to access a light stamina okay. around the Kiri Kiri, light stamina. So, MPA, if you don't have a payment per month or per year, per truck. Per if truck. you have 10,000 trucks coming through that road, you have to they pay, pay 11,000 11 each, Bro. apart from the eight or app payment. Mm -hmm. So, they, they, we pay this money through an, an syndicate, then they truck into a tr truck transit park. When we say put this before the acting MD, the acting MD says he's not aware, he was never aware of this. Then the TTP official said they are not aware of it. The port manager acting county said he has never heard about ah, this. So who is collecting the money? So we now, the, the, the acting MD said, do we have any um, proof? We now brought account number, they type it, they, have, they, they saw TTP. The TTP denied. Then immediately the acting MD, we saw exactly. a leadership quality in him that is ready to do something. Then he assigned his men to go and put up a letter. The DIG was in the meeting, AIG, I think, yeah. He summoned him. Then he said, we have to continue. We said, we are not doing anything. We are not saying anything. Not until we see your action on this force. OK, then, let, me, let, me, let me go on a break. Because mm. there's a lot of information mm. I'm trying to understand. Because this is a perennial problem that we need to fix. Let's go on a break. We'll try to get some, make some sense out of this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're trying to get to the bottom of the problem. And even for me, if you ask me, I'll say I'm even more confused. But the truth is, I want you to really expl explicitly explain to us that corruption part of the fact that you pay 11,000 Naira and yet the money is being remitted, yet the organization is saying they have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't understand how that, that's possible. Thank you. When we met with the acting MD on 7, we have most of the board, all of the board members there. The port manager acting can't deny. He said he knows every one of us, but I've never heard about this 11,000. The TTP as well, they denied. Then get on get, getting them the um, account, the final it was TTP. Then they asking them to say we must not pay that money okay. any longer. That same day, they, see, they are still there collecting. The following day, not until on the 14th, that we had meeting with Lagos State Government, Minister of Transport. As at on the 15th, then the, the collection still continue. I now sent uh, one of our, our PRO to go there to get me some evidence because they will keep saying to you they need evidence for this, evidence for that. Okay. On getting the evidence, we send the video, they, they deny it that it is not real. Then I had to tell him, okay, pay the 11,000, get me the receipt. We now pay the 11,000 for that same date on the 15th. He got me the receipt. I also I sent it back to them as well. What we have in return that day, we now notice that they now send the issue and the communicate that the 11,000 naira collection has been put on hold. Now, when we talk of corruption and in part of the policy, if they can come out officially on 11,000 naira collection on the road, not to going to the port, accessing the light terminal, tell me then you are now accusing law enforcement of collection, accusing every other man or woman collecting on the road. That is the genesis of the corruption. That is the genesis of the extortion. That is the genesis of the gridlock. All of those policies have to be reviewed. Who truly wants to get it right? So these are two levels. First of all, we are circumventing the effect, the, 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 app, app, the app itself, mm -hmm. right? That's one. Secondly, we're extorting officially from these same people. Mm -hmm. So it's two levels of corruption we are seeing here. You're not allowing the process to flow because the right thing is for, for you to book and then be called. Yeah. But those of you that have connections with the management, the finally, we just skip the line and then you go ahead. And those of you on the road too are being asked to pay 11,000 Naira. <laughs> Excuse me, those people that are getting the, uh, uh, skipping the line and jumping, mm -hmm. are they to pay the 11,000? They pay. Everyone pays. Everybody pays. You know, when the app was introduced, our leaders negotiated 5K, 10K, they end up agreeing on 10,000 Naira. Yeah. Then, on arrival to of access it all. Lighter, um, to, no, to access the to, to access the app. Report. Okay, the app. To do the, okay. to do your booking, they are going to charge your account. Yeah. You have so an because account I, because I have to wrap up soon, I'm so sorry, Mr. Hassan. Those who are skipping the line, do you know who they are? Are yes, they known course. names? We know them. Who are they? They are they, they, they are trucks that are branded with the Chelsea name, Manchester United, Arsenal. Who they are owns out, them? out who there. Who owns them? Truckers. 
So MPA, 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 MPA has, has a register. They are not part of the uh, association. This is what MPA do. Chelsea. They say there is, there is freedom of association. Then they have multiple associations to continue with the damage control in the industry. I beg. This, I this man has this to come is back. Like this. this is speaking in codes. I don't know. It's Chelsea. They have to enter inside so a so They can, they have, they to they can belong to whatever association they like. Mm. So if my association as much as Manchester now, we have powerful connection. You people that have truckers, whatever, like we are station, you can just you can yes. just go to something, something else. Okay. When you are so, trying to say this is how it's actually right, they are, you just empower them team. Okay. to override every one of you guys. Mm. So it's divide and rule that is happening at the MPA. Mm. You, you are divided properly so that proper so, corruption I, will continue. I bet this kind of man. So are you saying Lagos State? Excuse states? me. Okay. We have not talked about tankers. This kind of person cannot come for five minutes and then he will go. We have to sit down and interrogate him, get the names. Let us cook. Why can't we do this? Break the table. Break the table. Break the table. Break the table. Who is why can't we? Is it us that wants to go and arrest them? No, no, no. Why without saying their names? Why without saying their names? Who are these people? The people who are listening cannot say their names here. They are saying. But he says it's Manchester. Let's say it's Manchester United, Arsenal, and Chelsea. I don't know who those ones are. We have clean because it's the tax. Yeah, the head of the tax board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I have to we need all of them this, that are uh, decision makers there. If we want to change... Is it our uncle Dangote? Because we know Dangote. Dangote is our uncle. No, it is not It's not Dangote. Dangote. Okay, just think. Because that's the only one me I know. Dangote. Yeah, sure, he's not the one He's not a lines. trucker. Yeah, he's just... Okay, he doesn't have a trucker. He doesn't carry container. He doesn't carry container. We're talking to people that have a container. Tanker has nothing to do. Tanker has nothing to do with the old Tanker have. It's like Parasa Mordov. You people should carry your wallet and go. This is it. Tanker, can, mm -hmm. tanker don't come on the road if there's no product in tank fire. Can you give yeah. us... If we go and load now, they load in the jungle. See what they do. They so don't always come have, on the road if Mr. they don't have product. I have to wrap up. Since you're not telling us anybody, but it's all good, you understand? We have to wrap up on this. Uh, but I think no, we'll be able we to... to we have, a, ah, we have yeah, an, yeah, yeah. A, a glimpse of the problem that you're dealing Small. with. Yes. And we hope that the NPA is listening. And um, when we keep talking about this, we know that there are ways to fix the problem. It's just that sure. people have refused. Said, we, Nigerians, in three days. In three days. If we stop the Nigerian problem, the Nigerian factor, this Nigerian factor right here. Stop calling Nigerian for corruption. When we start glamorizing, glamorizing the names, that's why we get away with it. It's just corruption. corruption. Stealing and thieving, collecting monies that you're not supposed to collect. It's going into accounts and you're saying you cannot trace who the person, the person that is collecting it. Okay. I don't get it. Ah. This is we what we are saying. This corruption this. has when to stop. When we come back, we have to, <laughs> it's Tuesday, so we cannot but say something on health. When we come back, we continue with this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we have Adebola Adefioye, who's a child consultant who runs a child expert company that offers assessment, behavior modification, nutrition, school integration, amongst others, to individuals with neurodevelopmental disorders. She will be discussing neurodevelopmental disorders in children with special needs. Thank you for joining us on the show this morning. All right, so we always like to talk about children, but children with special needs don't get enough attention. How do we identify these children that need special that have that need special needs and how do we begin to create some kind of environment to help them to learn better okay um first we'll say that it's the parents that first notice these things because it's mothers mothers are very um, um, perspective perspective yeah they notice these things they see their child they like there's something wrong with this child and also they ask questions but because we do not have enough awareness, we do not have enough knowledgeable people in that field. So sometimes they are mis misdiagnosed. They like they just get no, most of them, they tell them to go to church, go to mm. church, go pray. The your child will be delivered, or they take them to deliverance homes and all that. So that's that's basically it. But now, well, people are getting to know more, and then because now it seems as if it's on the rise. Then we have more kids having one issue or the other. And also now people are coming to get more aware. Then parents are not so much in denial anymore. They are beginning to ask questions. Okay, what can I do to my child? How can I help my child? What do I need to do? Is there, is there, was there something I did wrong? Or is, is there, they just ask questions now. People are asking more questions. So it's more, it's better now than it was a couple of years ago. So if I'm watching this for the first time, I'm thinking, so what are these neurodevelopmental disorders? And what are the signs? 
Okay. Now, it's because it's a wide, it's wide, neurodevelopmental disorders are a lot. There's autism, there's ADHD, there's cerebral palsy. Like I said, it, there's Down syndrome. These are things that affect the brain. Sometimes it could, so we say that it could be caused by a medical condition, like cerebral palsy is, is medical. So you can see that, you, there's, there's, um, how would I explain it now? There are physical features. When you, when you see them, you know that, okay, this person has CP. But for someone that has ADHD or autism, mm -hmm. you can't see them. You, they're just like every child that you would see. But you just see that it bit, maybe like yeah. growing up, there's a bit of delay. Then you don't or probably talk early. Or, yes, or behavioral. Maybe you get to a place where, you know, kids would normally play. They get to a place, but you see that he's like in this place that is like well lit up. He's uncomfortable. The lights affect him. Or he's wearing something. He's scratching. He's, you know, this, you just see these signs and you'll be wondering what exactly is wrong with this child. Or maybe you talk too much. He doesn't keep eye contact. He or she doesn't look at you. You give him food. He's not able to eat. You know, so there are signs. It's like the, the signs, like I right. say, yeah, there are right. signs. So you see the signs. And then you begin to ask questions. So, so ask when do you start to worry? When a child has de delayed developmental growth, the, you know, so the stages. Yeah, the stages, When yes. a child is supposed to sit, it's supposed to sit. When mm -hmm. some children don't sit, sit yeah. some skip. Yes, Some true. will not sit at all, they will just walk. walk. Yeah. So what exactly, is, should, that, so you, should you start worrying when a child is skipping? Should you start worrying when a child is just extremely uh, restless? No. Actually, energetic, some that have yeah. this high level of energy. sugar in them. You don't hyperactive. Eat, hyperactive, yes. God bless you. You know, you just... So when are these, what are the signs a parent should, should use? Look because I, do you, as, a, as a, um, an expert in this, teach parents to love the children? Yes. No matter irrespective, what. Yes. Irrespective, yes. Okay. okay. Now, like they say, when a child, when your child is born, there are some signs, you know, when you look at a baby and then you smile at the baby and the baby smiles back, laughs, you coo at the child and the child responds back. But when you see have a baby that doesn't do that, those are like red flags. We call them red flags. You begin to check. But that doesn't mean that there's something there wrong with that child. Wrong, yeah. There are some times that some kids don't speak early. We have found out that it, um, it increases with the generation. What do I mean? If a father, maybe he didn't talk oh. until when he was one, there's a, there's a high possibility that the child will probably have delayed speech also. So that oh. is one, yeah. But those are, like I said, they're red flags. It doesn't mean that that child has this delay, but you just be careful. You begin to look out, okay, is there something? Maybe my child isn't speaking. I'm talking to my child, and my child is quick to, like, want to run away, or maybe he's playing... With, Typical child will play with toys, mommy and daddy, this is this and all that. But your child doesn't do that. You go to a place and the child is just like a way. He doesn't want to play with anything. He, does, he plays with toys in a repeated way. Like you can imagine, okay, let's say this is my phone. And then everything must be arranged in a certain way. When you tilt it, the child throws tantrums in quotes. You know, so those are signs that you look out for to like, what, okay, there's something, there's something. Like I said, it doesn't categorically say this is what is wrong with the child, but there are red flags. Mm -hmm. There are some things that you just need to like begin to notice and like look out for. As so are, are teachers in Nigeria trained for these? Because I know, I know it seems like not everybody's trained to have that kind of patience for these children who are special. They have special needs. How do we help teachers to be, to help them learn? Well, at, yes, there are trainings for this kind of things. There are, there are trainings, but it's like it's not a general thing because, it take, like you said, it takes a lot of patience. And then you have to be passionate about what you do because it's not like it's like the extreme ones that we see that maybe have to go to special schools. But in regular schools, there are kids there that will probably, in those days, we'll call them Olodo because they didn't mm. learn early. Mm. They were always behind. It was because they didn't find the right way to teach these kids. Mm. There are some kids that were in class that just need, maybe like now I'm talking, I'm talking very fast. The kid might not understand. But because there's a generalized way of testing us all, that mm -hmm. kid will probably be like, oh, look, that kid is, doesn't yeah. know anything. Mm -hmm. But if I know that child and I take my time, I'm like, okay, this is, maybe give the child extra support, so extra support. Maybe like after school, I sit down with the child, I explain better. They do better. So I think, like I always explain, everybody has a special need. It might just not be as pronounced as, as others. So we just need to know what it is. Our teacher strain, well, because like I said, awareness is, is increasing, so we are getting better. But I've also come to realize that we do not have enough hands. We do not have enough hands. Like, okay, the state, the state is trying because it's doing a lot with um, physical disabilities and all that. But for those that have neurodevelopment, like autism, like I explained, autism is not a same thing. You can't see it. So, yeah, so you take your child to, um, to school and the teacher doesn't understand. The teacher is 
shouting, the teacher is beating, or after you watch out, the gets tired, and really gets the child to the side. And okay, don't worry, sit down, they just come to class, you pay your school fees, and they're there, and then the child doesn't learn anything. And we know these days, they just keep pushing them, they keep, because every parent doesn't want their child to like repeat a class or do anything. So, so your parents are listening to you right now, thinking, what do I do? So I have a child who's autistic or who's a slow mm -hmm. learner, they aren't doing what, I've gone to the school, the school have said they're doing their best, they have trying to put, and, and I'm getting frustrated. I don't know what to do. What would you tell the, that parent? One, I would ask the parents to read up, to research, find out what exactly is wrong with their child. There are actually, there are actually places in Lagos that, that run tests and all that. We, and then we, I do that also. But one thing I always tell the child is that nobody knows your child better than you. So what you should first do is write down these things that you have noticed. You mm -hmm. must list them out so that when you're talking to a specialist, you can say, I noticed this. My other, maybe I have another son. My other son did this early, but this one isn't doing that. Okay, is there cause for concern? So those are the, you, like I said, you need to write down what exactly you've noticed. That way I can help, I can build up on that because like I said, I don't live with your child. It's what you say to me that will be able to explain to you, tell you, okay, this and this and this is what you should do. Uh, so I was okay. just going to ask you, because before the show, you were saying in the days like 20, 30 years yeah. ago, we would just beat the you autism shouldn't. out of the child. Yes. So is it possible to beat autism out of a child? No, no, I, I don't mean beat it out. I mean, like, okay, let's assume now. You know when after you beat a child for so long, the child becomes conditioned. conditioned. Mm. So he doesn't want to, ex even when he, he would exhibit them, but he would try not to. You see them, those are kids that you see that they've been subdued. Maybe that's the right word to use. They've been subdued. They've been beaten so much to submission. So they just don't do anything. And mm. after a while, the, you keep hearing people tag those children. You hear them say, ah, that child, very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Denny, you know, those kind of... Yeah, so that's, so mm. that's it. Mm. Okay, so for me... You know, what I find a lot um, curious are the ones that you say you cannot see anything physical. Yeah. So how do you separate How do you separate a stubborn child from a child that needs help? Okay. So this child is just stubborn. Just talk to him or sit him down and explain to him and he'll grow out of the stubbornness and know it may be ADHD or something. something. Okay, now, now, let's even assume the child is stubborn. There's something, like they always say, behavior is learned. So whatever um, behavior we, um, we allow, it grows. It, gets, it keeps increasing. But the behavior we work on, that we correct, it, goes, it decreases. So even if a regular child is, is stubborn, there must is something that is instigating that stubbornness. So we need to find out what that thing is. Is it that he's trying to communicate something and you're not understanding? Or you know how it is sometimes some parents have set ways of raising their child? And the child is saying, no, as in trying to pass across the media and the parents are not listening. So that brings out aggression or stubbornness in them. Now, to bring it, out to, to bring it down to a child that, is, um, that has a need or has a special need or something, there's, when the child is being... There are signs that you'd see, like I explained. It's a... For someone that has ADHD, they are very hyperactive. If you see them, they work, a lot of them work on their toes. They don't work like... They, they're like, um, like a, uh, you know, they can't sit down still. They're jumping up and down. That is a sign. So you can see that already. And like, this isn't stubbornness. Because even if you beat them and they sit down for two minutes, they're, they're jumping up again. again. So you know that, okay, this isn't stubbornness. There's something about this child, you know. Then for a child that has autism, there are different signs. Because it's a spectrum, it's not one person, one person might have this, another person might have this. One person might have light issues, sensitivity to light. Gets into a place that has too much light. He cringes. He's crying. He's jumping up. He's fidgety. Another person might be sound. Any, any sound that I, might, I and you might hear and not have any issues, the child would it react to the child. Yeah. And then some, some is for clothes. They, the fabrics you use sometimes irritate them. So mm. it's not, it's not mm. fixed. It, they have, it's like a lot. Right. So, so we, we have to wrap up soon, but I, I want you to speak to parents who are going through this because they need to be reassured that this, uh, this can be fixed in Nigeria or that there's hope for their children. Because sometimes just like, I like carry these children abroad or I just go and hide them in the village somewhere and nobody sees. You know, you, 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 you feel helpless. So listen to you this morning. Maybe somebody can be encouraged that my child can actually get help. Can, this, can, can, can they actually learn at some point yes. if we get a lot of attention? I want you to tell a parent. Okay. Um, Rhea, for any parent that has a child with a learning disability or anything, there's hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel. It seems like 
it's, um, it might be difficult. It's a journey. There's no, there's no rocket science. You don't, you, don't, you don't get therapy today, or get a therapist today, and then tomorrow you want results. Mm. Sometimes it might be three months. Sometimes it might be six. Sometimes it might be a year. But it's a journey. You see the progress. You see the change. You, and, you know, so you keep at it. Are there, are there centers? Yes, they might be expensive. But we also try to explain that. You can work with your child at home. You can do all these things, all these learnings and all that. You can work at home. Like I tell my, like a lot of my clients that I work with, if you can't afford the big schools, if you can't afford a regular school, you can work with your child at home. Teach your child colors. Your house has colors. Work with the child. Your, um, the child has, uh, is, um, he, he needs to learn. Work with sand because sand is a beautiful therapy for them. Mm -hmm. Music also is a beautiful way to work with them. So all these things, like I said, there's light at the end of the So you time. can read up and know how to help your child. Yes, even you can if you read can read afford up. a yes, therapist. You, yes, you, yes, you can read up. So that even yeah. when the therapist is seemingly going wrong, you can be like, no, that's not how it's done. Uh, why don't you, can we try this, let you let know? So like that. Is there a cure for autism? No. Let me be to They ask. just manage, as in, it's, we manage it. It's like asking, mm -hmm. is, there, is there a cure for high blood pressure? Is like, do you understand, man? It's like, yes, it's manageable. Once you, and that's why we keep asking, keep saying, early detection, early therapy, start quickly, start on time, you know, so that this journey, you know how it is, the mind of a child is malleable when the child is still young, compared mm -hmm. to when you're starting work with someone that is a teenager or is an adult right. and all that. But right. when the child is still two, three, four, you can still work with the child. There are so many things you can do with the child that the child would be able to learn and function in, with his own capabilities. Yeah. So I think what parents like will be asking yeah. is... What, what parents should do is be pay available. Yes, yeah, be a patient. You can, yes, you can be and impatient. Yes. Your child yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. And I think yes. what mothers or parents will worry about is that would my child grow up into an adult that can thrive and be independent? Yes. Okay, now let me, let me another yeah, example yeah. is like, yeah, in Nigeria here, we're beginning to do that. I think it was, was it last year or something? There was a, um, an autistic, autistic boy, a, a guy that got married, he had autism. You know, so they can live a normal life. Yeah, normal life. We just need to condition them, help them early enough. So they, because these kids, as they grow up, they understand what their triggers are. They know what irritates mm, them. So, yeah, so maybe like a child that has sensitivity to light and is coming here will probably wear glasses or would have told you before, I'm, I'm sensitive to light. So you're going to have to either dim your light or do something to help me. So because he knows that already, he would have told everybody around him. So then you can condition your, your environment to be them. What we keep asking is help them be them. Help mm. me be me. Help me be me. Help me be who That's I want to be. Help me to, to try irrespective right. of my difficulties or my disabilities. Mm. Thank you very much, Zadifia. Oh, I think, you, I think, I think that, 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 that definitely hit the nail on the hill. Thank you so much for thank you. sharing this with us. And I hope that families out there going having children with neurodevelopmental disorders and see that it is possible for their children to live normal lives. That's all we can take on the show today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>